the uh, debris pile itself is dramatically being reduced, almost to the point where it's at ground level in many places and actually below. So our teams are making incredible progress. Tonight at 11, progress at the collapse site and surf side, and that means closure for more families as more and more victims are identified. Crews say they will continue to sift through the rubble as long as it takes to find everyone who's missing. Meanwhile, community and faith leaders are at the site to support grieving families and friends who are now remembering those gone way too soon. CBS 4's Jessica Vallejo spoke to some of those who lost their loved ones. She joins us with more. Jessica. Well, two of the family. Hi, Jessica Vallejo, CBS 4 News Tonight. Jessica, thank you. Governor Ron DeSantis late this afternoon issued an executive order which indefinitely suspends payment of property taxes for all taxpayers whose property was destroyed or rendered uninhabitable due to the collapse of Champlain Towers South on June 24th. That executive order also requests that Florida lawmakers explore additional legislation to alleviate the taxpayers' property tax obligations. Meanwhile, a ripple effect from the building collapse is potentially impacting every building in Surfside on the east side of Collins Avenue, regardless of its age. Teams of contractors are working to review the soil, foundation, and the structure of the Champlain Towers North condo building that stands only yards away from the collapse site. A move Surfside Mayor Charles Burkett says he fully supports. We'll be able to see if there's any obvious signs of deterioration. Uh, they'll take core samples. They'll be able to test in a lab the compression strength of the structural elements in the building, the concrete as well. I think everybody wants to basically ensure that they're safe. Engineers and other officials say it will take several weeks to get the full results back from the review, but after that they will decide what to do with the North Condo building. The right thing to do is to do as much as you can. Well, that's been the motto of businesses in Surfside who have been helping anyone affected by the collapse, families, residents, and first responders. Now, those who helped are in need of help. CBS 4's Bo Beth Yates joins us live from Surfside with what some business owners are saying about their situation since the collapse. Bo Beth. Side, Bo Beth Yates, CBS 4 News tonight. So many people impacted. Bobeth, thank you. Now to some much needed good news in all of this. One of the cats that was missing from Champlain Towers South has been found. Binks, a cat living on the ninth floor of Champlain Tower South, was recently found near the site. And a few hours ago, he was reunited with his family. Thank you from the bottom of my heart and all of us are so happy to have played a role in returning Banks with his family. And there he is. The cat was found near the rubble and was brought to the Kitty Campus. That's an animal rescue in Miami Beach. Then this morning, the cat was reunited with one member of the family. Okay, what would you, what would you do if you were given 15 minutes to gather your most important valuables? My husband's medicine, some clothes. I'm trying to get most of my clothes, my memories. Residents of the evacuated Crestview Towers had to do just that today. We'll have their story after the break. Plus, booster confusion. Will people need a booster vaccine to deal with new variants of COVID-19? What officials say up next. Now to the latest in the coronavirus pandemic. Pfizer is making a push for a third dose of its COVID-19 vaccine, but the federal government is pushing back, causing some major confusion. As the CDC urges schools to reopen nationwide this fall, the agency issued new guidelines saying vaccinated teachers and students no longer need to wear masks inside school buildings. The CDC called vaccination, quote, one of the most critical strategies to help schools safely resume full operations. I think that new guidance is essentially meaningless unless you have a way to track who has been vaccinated, who hasn't. That comes as Pfizer says it will apply to the FDA to give emergency authorization to a booster for its vaccine. But the Biden administration, including the CDC and FDA, say there's no evidence booster shots are necessary, at least not now. We wanted to make uh, clear uh, that uh, that is not something that the American people need to plan for at this moment. In a statement, Pfizer says new data showed immunity from its vaccine begins to wane after six months.
Let's see where things unfold. Right now, the science and evidence says that two shots of the Pfizer or the Moderna vaccine is more than good enough to protect you against all the variants out there, including the Delta variant. Amid lagging national vaccination rates, cases are rising in 26 states. In Florida, the Florida Department of Health says statewide, the positivity rate is now nearly 8%. In Miami-Dade and Broward counties, it's more than 5%. And in Monroe County, more than 9%. Hospitalization rates are up in 17 states, 27% in Florida, almost exclusively among the unvaccinated. As far as vaccination rates go, statewide, 58% have been vaccinated. In Miami-Dade specifically, nearly 75%. The United Teachers of Dade released a statement this afternoon in response to the CDC's suggested guidelines. The union said it's prepared for a full in-person school year to start in August. The union also urged those who can to get fully vaccinated before school begins and for children not vaccinated or under the age of 12 to wear their masks. Turning now to the Biden presidency, the president called Vladimir Putin today and issued a warning saying the U.S. will take, quote, any necessary action to stop Russian Hackers. This after hackers said to be from Russia attacked the pipeline, the meat industry, and most recently a Florida-based firm. CBS 4's Weijia Jiang is at the White House with more. Tonight, President Weijia Jiang is CBS News. Tonight in sports, hear from the new Dolphin broadcast crew for the upcoming preseason schedule. Plus, things get heated between the Marlins and the Braves. Sports anchor Mike Cunio joins us up next. Let's leave you with some uplifting Aww. news. Giant pandas are no longer endangered. Chinese officials say decades of work to save the species has paid off, driving up their population in the wild to 1,800, which classifies them as vulnerable instead. China has spent half a century working to boost the population of its most famous native animal and that includes sprawling panda reserves packed with their main food source bamboo experts say other rare and endangered species like siberian tigers and asian elephants are also rebounding they really 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 like bamboo they look well fed too <laughs> yeah. they're so cute that's what the world needs more pandas yes that's it for cbs 4 news tonight the late show with Stephen colbert is next cbs 4 this morning starts at 9 a.m have a good night and stay safe